there are some changes that I wanted to make in the uh, in the in the quality improvement for residents, but this topic still applies. So uh, she, they can they can present they can talk at the end of this. Do you want the lights on or lights off? It's good for us. It's good for you. As long as nobody falls asleep on me quite yet, <laughs> I am good. It is, uh, it is okay to me, for me. I am Luca. Uh, I can't remember if I met any of you last time. I was here about like, a year ago. Um, I am a value engineer that reports through hospital and clinics, So I ha but also I work with the School of Medicine at various other colleges both with the graduate medical education program as well as the um, undergraduate, undergraduate education. So I've had the pleasure and the opportunity to work with learners of various experience, uh, primarily in teaching aspects of uh, quality improvement, uh, value, as well as cultural transformation, uh, etc. My background is that I have been assisting learning with other people uh, for the last 10 years in, uh, uh, in healthcare. Uh, I, I spent five years at Intermountain Healthcare where we developed what they now call the uh, continuous improvement framework. Uh, and then I came here to work with the academic and research enterprise. I actually, and I, did, I didn't mention, but I also work with the CCTS and a tri innovation network uh, in, a, in assisting researchers and removing barriers to participate in research as well. Um, I was thinking about it. Usually my approach is for these one hour sessions, which I don't mind, but like I said, there's a lot of information and I end up doing I end up talking a lot because I have to I feel like I have to convey this information, but ultimately because then I have this naive belief that if you if people have questions they can always reach me late teach me later and I can answer them, etc. Sometimes people don't have time either, though. Still, there is some information that is going to be conveyed to you. Some of it is going to be familiar. Some other is going to be new to you. I would like to challenge you to at least have one big idea. And that's what I mean for big idea is there's, going, there's a lot. At least capture one thing, one concept, one principle, one tool, one idea of how you can use, you can take all this, this all in and help you in your practice. And I could even make it broader, I could say, I, I don't want to be like, how can this information help you in your life? Because as you're going to see, you're already doing these things. This is nothing new. It's how I'm packaging it that is going to be sounding like, hmm, hopefully it's going to be like, that's pretty cool. But one big idea, one concept that you're going to take out, take away with, with you, uh, that can help you with your current job. Quality improvement. You can read this slide, but I'm going to ask you anyways. You've heard it. What does, quali what does quality improvement mean to you? something that you're, that you think that could be done better and figuring, and dissecting it and figuring out what could be done better. Mm, then, I like it. Yeah, doing something, something better. Anything else? Changing systems to get better outcomes. Progressive systems to get better outcome? Right. 
is the focus of quality improvement always is not a trick it's not a trick question I swear is the focus of quality improvement always to improve an outcome because ultimately it is but sometimes you can't quite get to the outcome right away you have to focus on other things I may I briefly mention them here there are outcome metrics and there are process metrics <laughs> The focus of your quality improvement project, let's use that term for once, uh, is may actually be to just focus on those process metrics, because the outcome is just too big. You don't, you can't focus on that quite, quite right away. Quality improvement. This slide also mentions something else. The word systematic. Can you do quality improvement without actually thinking things through? It won't be very good. It will work. You can get, I don't want to say you can get lucky, but it does happen. You can just implement a change and without a system, without a method, and you just may get lucky and the problem is solved. There is this, this con and another challenge that I have is that the term quality improvement to me is somewhat diminishing. I use the term process improvement for a broader and more specific, uh, for a broader reason because quality is one aspect of what we're trying to achieve. Improving quality is one aspect of the thing that we're trying to achieve, and we're gonna I'm gonna show you the value equation in a moment. But ultimately, the quality what are, what creates quality, what creates cost, what creates uh, service uh, is driven by processes. What you do every day, coming to work, uh, scrubbing in, uh, operating on the patient, checking on the patient, running, running on the patient, those are all processes. And improving them is really what we we're talking about in here. And I like that, but what quality improvement should be? Well, quality improvement should be your str so you striving to making the system safer, more timely, uh, provide eff effective and efficient outcomes, and then equitable, should be cost effective, and then patient center. This is my, I used to have 10 slides over what quality improvement was, and what lean was, and well, what is lean? What is Six Sigma was? This is what I'm gonna give you now, <laughs> because I find that this is, it, it's pretty comprehensive for the purpose of what you're trying to do. And what you're trying to do is make sense of this. Have you seen this before? What do we mean by value equal quality plus service under cost? What it, is this pretty unique to the University of Utah? No. It's not. There are different variations of this equation uh, captured from different organizations. Uh, we add Actually, the, main dif the only difference is that we add the service component, other organizations leave it out. To us, it's important because we made a big deal out of it, and it is a big deal, and we're very good at it. So we, we feel that including the service as part of what our value outcome is makes sense. So we define value being equal it's quality plus service under cost. Uh, how do you define value? Yes, I'm going to try to make you talk almost for the next hour. Because this, this is helpful. It's a valid conversation. What does, is value different for you than this framework, this uh, equation? Now it seems like it's the bang for your buck. What are you getting out for what you're paying? Right. Hey, what's your name? Brad. Brad. Does this apply in healthcare too? <clears throat> yeah. I think so. Your patients come in, they should be able to see you uh, and be treated by all your staff and with, <laughs> with high quality care and with good manners, bedside manners, treat nicely 
and then pay as little as possible. What does quality mean though? What's a good quality outcome? And who defines what that is? Do you, do the patient, do the nurses? I think sometimes it depends. Like some, we have projects that are, um, that also deal with more, I guess, satisfaction of the residents for their learning experience. And then one thing that I would add to cost is that value should also be timely. Mm -hmm. I guess that, but time is money, so I guess it's like timely. Like time is cost. <laughs> but I feel like a lot of a lot of the processes that we try to address in quality improvement is timeliness. If something's not efficient or the workflow has a problem, then we try to increase um, the, the efficiency or effectiveness in a timely fashion. I like what you said, and you actually used another word. You, 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 start, you talk to us about the uh, timeliness and importance of the processes from the point of view of the residents. Value, according to who? There is another piece of this equation that I've not mentioned yet, which, but is this. Who defines what the value is? Which defines what is it we're working on? Is it a resident? Is it a provider? Is it a patient? Is it Luca? I wish I could decide what we work on, but I think they're never mind. I think sometimes I would, I would lead it the right way. Some other times I would probably be somewhat selfish, which is actually very important too. This is what we're talking about, sponsors and people that help you with your project. Remember that people are people and they have their own, they have their own priorities. For the purpose of these conversations, we always talk about the patient defining what value is. They are the, <clears throat> the ones that ultimately were trying to cater with their definition of value. And value is an activity that transforms or add to the product or service being created. Very, the didactics, a luxury statement, but ultimately I stand by it. You are doing something, you're operating on your patient, you're, you are, uh, talking with him or her, or you're walking to the patient, uh, or you're changing to treat the patient, the changing, the walking is not value added. The patient doesn't care about that. The patient just want to be treated. They want to be told what is wrong with them, or, and so on. So, but, all, but also, many of the processes don't directly tie to the patient, so like, uh, residents, log charting and logging, or tracking of information, that is not really direct tying to the patient. Those are processes too. The customer just different, it changes. All throughout the patient care <coughs> journey, from a registration, all the way to inpatient, all the way to billing and so on, there is you. There is a downstream and there is an upstream. There are value-added activities and non-value-added activities that take place. Ultimately, for the purpose of simplicity, an activity in healthcare is value-added when uh, it builds on patient information or it <coughs> is part of direct care provision. So when, you're to when we are talking about patient treatment, patient care, that the previous statement I gave is still valid, but for patient, for patient treatment, we say that an activity is value added when it, it builds on patient information or it helps with, with care provision. That is you. This slide is important to me because hopefully it gives you a visual that there are people helping, working in the process before you and after you. We are all, we call them stakeholders in this process. And when we say we cannot in, improve the processes, do a quality, improve quality by, by ourselves, this is, we mean that there are other people involved in the process. And sometimes there are problems. Not everything goes well, patient doesn't show up on time, or so they need, an instrument is missing in the surgery, tr surgical tray, or uh, there was an incorrect error in the chart, there was an incorrect statement in the chart, et cetera, or the patient bill as on, was never sent. There are errors in the problem, there are, there are errors in the system, there are problems. 
For the purpose of Lucas presentations, a problem is a gap in performance. Problems are not bad, problems are expected. Most of the time, the reasons why we're doing quality improvement projects is because we're addressing a, an identified and known problem. We just don't know what's causing it. Question for you, which also this builds on your potential quality improvement projects. What are examples of non-value added activities? So if a value added activity is something that builds to direct care provision or adds to, pro to the patient's information uh, and for the non-patient related processes, uh, a value added activity is something that builds and adds uh, towards the completion of an outcome. What, is an what are examples of non-value added activities? Any quality improvement project that involves just resident education alone is not a value-added activity. Fun one. Is, residence edu is, this, is this resident education value-added? I would submit yes, because the residents do better. The indirect patients are going to think the residents are better, right? Yeah. It could be. I, Technically. Technically. Let's take an, let's take an example. Um, when you're moving the patient from the, from the waiting room to the OR, or from the surgery, I'm not, I'm not familiar with how many steps there are in ophthalmology surgery. I'm a little bit more familiar with the regular, with different surgery. But from the, from the little room to the OR table, is that process of moving the patient value added? No, it does not, it's not, no, it's not. You have transportations, you have motion of the patient, you move just, all this going between rooms is not value added. It's waste, it's wasteful. Uh, is uh, making and having to fix the chart or having to fix the billing or having to fix the scheduling because an error was making in doing it, is that value added? No. Errors are not value added. They delay the process of care. What else? Uh, over doing more exams, this is one is easy, we saw it, it's always in the news, doing more exams, like whether they are x-rays or CTs, than the patient requires. Is it value added? It's not. We call them over processing or over producing. Any other examples? I came up with all of them. Think about this, because most of the quality improvement projects, something like implementing a, uh, a protocol uh, for patients check-in, or implementing a handoffs process or something like that, they are aiming to eliminate some sort of waste. Non-value other activities are also called waste. Usually it's something like uh, errors in communications, waiting for something to take place. Waiting is a big one. That's right, I forgot about it. How can I forget about waiting? You are there in the OR, the patient is not there yet. Usually I have the patient waiting Let's make, the pro let's make it a surgeon waiting. I had, a, I had an orthopedic surgeon. He was waiting for 10 minutes. Eventually he looked at me. We had a good relationship. He's like, where's my patient? I'm here waiting. And the patient isn't here yet. The patient wears hold. This, this stuff happens. You know this more than me. The patient had to go to the bathroom at the last moment. But the provider was waiting. It's waiting value added. Now, waiting is not value added to the current process and then the one coming later as well. So, there are documents that I have, there are handouts I've prepared and I'm gonna make available to you, which actually goes through examples of seven type of these non-value added activities or waste. Uh, take a look at them, that may help you to get ideas of what to work on. This is not a trick question. 
what is problem solving? Thank you. Identifying a problem, uh, using some sort of method uh, to, to fix and, and make a change. How often do we do problem solving? Every day. How complex is problem solving? Depends on the problem. Bingo. This is not to overcomplicate things, there is a time and a place for complex problem solving, and there is time and a place for just doing something simple. The easiest way I came up to help you see the difference is if you're driving on the freeway or that you're driving anywhere and your fuel gauge, which by the way is called visual management, is a visual indicator of something, which is how much fuel I have in my car, is going has a little light, orange light that lights up. What do you do when you see the little orange light lights up in your fuel gauge indicator? Ignore it. <laughs> you could ignore it. That helps. You can put a band-aid on it. What do you do? Uh, getting gas. You think about getting gas. You could hopefully get put gas in it. Do you take the car to the mechanic? Oh my gosh, there's an orange light in there, it's light up. I gotta take it to get it fixed. Now, this is one of those examples where you, it's simple problem solving. You, you can't wait until forever. You can be like Kramer in Seinfeld and see how far you can go with, with an with a empty tank of gas. Or you can go to the nearest gas station and put gas in it. Now, you're driving on the freeway or any other road and your car starts rattling or the engine shuts off. What do you do? You pull over. Now you go to the mechanic. Now it's complex problem solving. Now you need some help from other, from other people. It's different. There are examples. This is, is this important to me? Because then I get into argument and debates for hours with people explaining, trying to get me to say, Luca, it's just do it. Those ideas that, be, that don't require a team, they just help you fix a simple process, uh, that, don't re that you know what's causing the problem, and you just want to make a quick change. Is that quality improvement? Yes, it is. Uh, it's a complex problem solving where you use a framework of some sort like we were saying earlier, where you collect data, you, you analyze it, then you finally make a change. Is that quality improvement? Yes. It's research, where really, it's that you're trying to test an idea, you're trying to get new information. Is that quality improvement? Yes, it is. So why are you telling me that I really should be doing complex problem solving? Because I'm trying to create this process where you actually are learning to use certain tools rather than just making a change. But Luca, what about I have a gut feeling about this problem and I really don't, my, my, pro, my QI project is going to be surveying people to collect data. Is that quality improvement process? I don't like it, but yes it is. Because if you're trying to make a change and you have no data, and you know that there is a problem, the act of collecting the, inform the data is part of your future quality improvement project. I call them, I call them fa phase zero, or the beginning of a project, but then you go there and you present in front of the audience, I, had this pro I thought we had this problem, we surveyed people, this is our results, and that's the end of it. Like, okay, that is great. So, these are all type of 
complex problems of uh, pro quality improvement processes, but it just depends the, what varies in complexity is your resources, as how much time you're gonna take to implement your project, your so on. Notice I have tried not to use the word project yet, because if someone comes to me and say, do I need a project to do a just do it kind of implementation? Do I need a project to see if, to get permission to get more cables that fit the right computers? Because one is always running away, so I have a great idea, let's just have a backup cord. No, you don't need to assemble a team, you just do it. That's what I call them, just do it. This is where you have a project, this is where you have a project, this is where you have your teams working with you. Also, right, for the next 30 minutes or so, my goal, my focus is to help you get some understanding of tools in complex problem solving. By the way, how many of you are familiar with the IHI modules in quality improvement? Have you gone through the videos, read through them? Okay, they're valid, they're good. Um, there is a lot of information out there. We are making our own. I think I like it, I, and I think we're doing a good job. Those mod IHI modules f promote what is the PDSA cycle, Plan, Do, Study, Act. To me, Plan, Do, Study, Act is here. And that's what I finally settled in. When you're doing it with a small, ch those are the plan, do, study, ask, small, well, works well with a small test of change. Otherwise, you gotta do, when you have, right. I keep going back and forth and I apologize for that. In here, most of the time, you know what the, what the cause of the problem is. Or if you don't, it's usually very simple to figure it out. Complex problem solving, you don't know what the problem is, what's causing the problem, and that's what you need to figure out. The difference between the two approaches is really root cause analysis, which is what? Now we're gonna talk about it. There are many variations of methods and system in ways of approaching quality improvement. Sorry, I didn't even remember to catch your name. I'm Rachel. Rachel. Mm -hmm. How, what, when you were this talking to us about problem solving, mm -hmm. you kind of mentioned a framework for solving problems. How are you familiar with that concept? Have you taken these kind of classes before? Or? No, I think there's just been more um, things like this where we talk about um, plan, do, the, like the, I, I don't know, now I'm forgetting <laughs> So if I said things like Six Sigma, or DMake, or PDSA... That's the only one that I've heard. Okay, that's good. One out of four so far. Or uh, A3, or 20, I don't know, 20G. I'm making, st I'm making stuff up now. I have counted about 15 different frameworks for doing complex problem solving at the University of Utah. It's entertaining to me, because in the end, call them what you want, I don't care. Ultimately, when you're doing complex problem solving, and this happens in daily life as well, this is not about healthcare quality improvement, you're trying to figure out if you have a problem, you're trying to figure out why is it a problem, what is causing it, and how are you gonna solve it, and how do you know if it worked. This is how we call our steps which is somewhat borrowed by the Six Sigma framework. What is that? Don't worry about it for now. To me, it's just important that when you have a project, mm, I use the word project, when you have something to work on, you can, if you, when you have a problem that you want to address, you know that and you come to me, look, I would like some help. You owe me a problem statement and then I'm gonna help you do a baseline analysis which is collecting the data, then we're gonna figure out what's causing the problem before you are actually solving anything. Usually, 
people come to me with, look, uh, I want to create a protocol. Is creating a protocol a problem? Let me rephrase that question. Is not having a protocol a problem? Not necessarily. Not necessarily, it could be. We don't know yet. So why do we, why do we, start, why do we jump start this process by saying we need to implement a protocol, we need to create a standard, we need to buy a machine, those poor wonderful robots, we need to have them in the OR, let's just buy a bunch of them because that make us happy and it costs millions of dollars. There is a problem, we have millions of dollars to spend. <laughs> let's spend them. I am going to very quickly go through this this is where we're going to be spending time if we meet together specifically on a, pro on a project. By the way, I guess I should have been clarified. What is a quality improvement project at this point for you? Not a trick question, I swear. You identify the problem, you're going to address it and you would dedicate a specific amount of time, efforts, and resources, that's your project. Right? Let's all agree to that. <laughs> I'm making an arbitrary decision that that's what a quality improvement project is. It really is. I like so when we have a quality improvement, so a problem statement is where things start. People, this is important because if you don't have a very a well formulated problem statement, you're going to get lost in the problem. It becomes, a, there, is such, there is such a word as scope. You do problem statements all the time when you meet with patients, you ask questions. You ask them, do you hurt? Where does it hurt? Can you, where, where could you see? Where, what, what is going on? What about this, what about that? You are trying to clarify the problem, what the problem is, before you actually address it. I have found, and I'm happy to actually have seen, that if I give you these questions, you actually come up with a pretty good problem statement. From those people that used to come to me and say, Luca, my problem is that uh, I need to implement a, stand, a standard work document, a protocol in my department because people are late. So I need to, I need to uh, improve the charting. If they start thinking, okay, what is the problem? Why is it a problem? How does the problem impact the customer? When and where does it happen? That's just when is the frequency, like in the morning, in the afternoon, when the patient arrives, etc. And where is the unit? I'm just trying to be specific. Um, if you answer these questions, that's how. An example of a problem statement that was well written. I don't know if you can read from over there. Uh, women presenting for screening mam mammography at the Huntsman Cancer Institute have to wait an average of six days uh, to receive final normal results. For 97 and 98% of women who can be given normal results after routine exam, this is a necessary delay and a major source of anxiety. Time to result serves as a surrogate target measure for reducing arms. So, what's the problem? Waiting. Waiting. Why is it a problem? Anxiety. Because of anxiety. Uh, where does it happen? Husband, uh, how often? That is the 97 98% of the, of the patients. It's a simple enough formula. When you get to your, how many of you, have you guys identified a problem already you're gonna be working on? Okay. Have you built your problem statement in, in some sort of this fashion? Fashion? Not as formal. Okay. What problem are you working on? Um, we're working on the uh, intern experience at the VA. Okay. What's the problem there? Uh, so many. So many. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty broad category. Yes. Yeah. 
yes. The, it, one of the problems is that there isn't a curriculum outlined clearly for the learning experience of the intern. The second one is that we have an intern manual that's five years out of date, so okay. we wanted to improve that. Why there are so problem? many processes that you mess up for the patient and cause harm, or okay. wait, mm -hmm. or waste. Thank you. <laughs> like, okay. And undo right. anxiety for the intern. <laughs> And the patient. <laughs> I see. I, I I have to ask these questions because and and people are like, can you just give me a break? Can I just make a change? No, you can't because if you if you, if you can't address if, if if you can't think through why an old manual is a, is bad, then you're just th you're doing stuff. Yeah, guys. The the fuck is that? Time, money, resources are limited. If we had unlimited resources, there is a concept around. Lean. Lean is built around the principles and management system of the, of the Toyota production system. The guys that build cars. Uh, there is a principles in there, unlike in 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 Six Sigma, which is take, taken abroad from a different methodology from Motorola. In Lean, we say that we're gonna work on all the problems. Eventually, we're gonna get there. So you work on the smallest thing possible, but you still have to understand what you're working on. So the first part is what is the problem? You build a problem statement. The second part, why is it a problem? Is the baseline analysis. Baseline analysis is collecting the data. How did you know that the manuals were five years old or so? Because um, they have uh, <laughs> a <day laughs> the, the handwriting of residents that go back five years. <laughs> So, how did you know though? Did you go look? Yeah, or okay. we have the manual and it, there's pages missing and it's ripped. And it's, yeah. It has lots of handwriting that. Five is generous. Yes. <laughs> what about the, uh, the lack of uh, the not having training, formalized training, or what you were saying earlier? Yeah, right I think. Yeah, yeah there, there just isn't a curriculum. There's, the fact that it's not a curriculum, how do you know that? Because there is. <laughs> you don't find one. Again, you want to look for it. Yes. Right? So, th this is not, again, I'm oversimplifying things, but ultimately, what you did is called going and seeing. The only Japanese word you may or may not choose to remember is gamba. If you like to use it, do it. If you don't like me, say go and see. It's doing observations. Basically, you're going to. Before you can make a change, before you try, before you understand what the, what the problem is, you gotta talk to people, you gotta open the binder to actually check the, the dates, etc. You go and see, but this is important because when you're going and saying, when you're doing observations, you are not, you're asking questions, you're there to learn, you're not there to give advice. Refrain from making judgments, refrain from uh, make, giving advice or trying to solve problems on the spot. That's not what you're doing there. Some other times, you may need to do a process map. Usually when you're looking at something like timing components or delays or waiting or trying to figure out where the issues are in a process that is not very well known, you do a process map. These are just examples of them. When and if you would like some help with your specific projects, uh, let me know, and I will help you more details of creating a process map for your project. Uh, process mapping, and which is visualizing the process, usually takes place in a room like this. You are on a whiteboard, you're drawing steps, and you're talking, and everybody thinks they know what is going on, but nobody, nobody by themselves really does, because you're, unless you own the process and you're the only person doing it, but still, going to the Gamba, observing, it's important to fill in the gaps of uh, um, the, what actually takes place in the workplace. And then, of course, collect some data. The easiest Again, we can talk about it in more detail when we meet it, when we meet separately. But the point we're making that some quite often just talking about averages is not doesn't provide a complete picture. 
So leveraging histograms, bar charts, or run charts give you a better vision of what the, if the actually is a problem. This is where um, complex problem solving differ, is different from just do it kind of implementation. Because in just do it, you identify your problem, you look at your baseline analysis, and like, oh, I know how to fix it. You just fix it. In complex problem solving, you're like, what the heck? I don't know what's causing this problem. It's like in the, with, I'm doing a project for, to, to simplify the clinical placement of students, of learners. Uh, <coughs> residents also, but primarily uh, undergrad students or people from different colleges are placed in, uh, in clinics. This process of getting, you, you've gone through this, trying to find, try to match your schedule to the provider schedule, to the clinic schedules, so you can observe the process in there and learn, it's a mess. How to fix it? It's not simple. That's what we used. And by the way, this is funny to me because it's usually somebody's fault, but it's not. There is a process. There is, sorry, there is the causes of the problem are usually deeper than what you think they are. Trying to decide what to address, it's, it, 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 it revolves around specific tools like these, fishbone diagrams, five wires, then ANOVA, Pareto analysis, FMEA, risk analysis, what are those things? I don't even talk about them. Because most of the time, the type of, the type of problem solving we do here in healthcare at this level, five fishbone diagram and five Ys are more than sufficient. I had some handouts on that and I think they're clear enough to get you started. Finally, we have collected all this data, We've decided what we're, what cause we're going what cause we're going to address. If I say what cause we're going to address, what do I mean? Do I have to explain it differently? What's the cause of a problem? What's the cause of the problem? The system. System can be part of it too. Yes, but when I'm talking about cause of the problem, it's the problem is still there, you're just picking something uh, that you're gonna be addressing on. Uh, don't jump to solution. When do you know when it's time to fix it? Well, because the group has decided to. Hopefully your project is going to include other people besides just yourself. <coughs> there are specific tools to improve a process, but Unless your change reduces variations, eliminate waste, eliminate errors, improve performance, please don't make a change. It's going to be pointless. If you're actually not improving anything, it's pointless. If, if the curriculum that you're building, that you're making it clear because it's going to decrease variation in knowledge, it's going to improve performance, doesn't actually get you there, maybe you need to reconsider your intervention. This is important because everybody does this. One of my favorite learning experience was when uh, me and this improvement group made a change. We were so proud of it. We found a way to, to streamline the intake process by having the, the patient charts being reviewed earlier and we saved 10 minutes of the intake process. And then the surgery director told me that the top surgeon came to her and is like, where is the patient chart? Oh, the nurse has it. Yeah, but I need to view it first. Oh, but we did, a, we did an improvement project and so this saves us 10 minutes. Yeah, but I can't see the chart, so where is the chart? Don't worry, I'll make it work. I don't want the surgeon to tell me. I don't want anyone to tell me we make it work. We missed the opportunity to, uh, to include them in a discussion around improving the process. In reality, we didn't really make any difference. I'm almost done. How do you know it worked? Is a conversation around 
outcome measure, process measure, balance measures. Uh, when you're trying to improve patient experience, when you're trying to uh, r reduce mortality rates, when you're trying to improve infection rates, uh, those are infection rates, uh, in vaccinations, uh, screenings, those are outcomes. It's different type of metrics that you set for those. Otherwise, because sometimes, if, if if somebody comes to me and say, look, we're going to increase, we're going to decrease, in, improve our discharge time. Okay, how are you gonna do that? Because discharge times has a lot of factors into it. There are many processes that go into, that, into making it happen. And so decreasing uh, discharge time is a complex problem solving, sure, but it's also an outcome. So how are you gonna do that? Well, we're going to focus on uh, residence uh, order reviews. Okay, order re residence order reviews, that's your process metric. Discharge time, that's your outcome. And you don't want to make anybody mad, patient satisfaction or customer satisfaction is your balance measure. Without this, you don't know if your project worked or not. That's why uh, Many, pro many QI projects that go like, we surveyed people, by the way, everybody does it. So if, if your project is that, I have no problem, I'm just being clear. If your QI project is collecting data and surveying people, and in the end, you've not made a change, you don't know if something happened, in reality, that is not a full cycle QI project. Yours, specific. Thank you for providing me some examples. Education, you can work on something like that. <laughs> in reviewing last, in reviewing the past five years of projects, either you do a lot of rotations on the VA, or the VA has a lot of opportunities, which I'm glad because they're visible. You can see them. Every time I ask people, you know what? I'm, I'm not picking on them. Actually, I'm, I'm very glad that residents or people that work at the VA they can find problems just like that. Because when I ask people here, what problem can you solve? I don't know. Well, you don't know. So yay VA for making it easier to find problems. Whether you have more of them or not, I don't know. Flow, when you're trying to improve a response code or uh, improving patient access, that's a flow type of project. Quality uh, or cost. You can partner up with your peers to, re to reduce costs as well. This is a lot of information all at once. This is why there are other resources. I'm gonna send you some links for it so you can review them. Uh, this is our versions of QI, of IHI modules. And then, don't forget you're not alone. There are many other people that you can leverage and you can ask questions and you can learn from. I do this all the time. So. That's all I have.